Okay, trooper. Trooper, trooper, trooper. What do we have here? Oh, wow, trooper. You've got a lot of problems. Come here, let me talk to you. All right, let's see. You've been barking at people. That's no good. Be careful. What are you doing barking at people, huh? What did the people do to you? You seem pretty cool to me. You seem all right. I don't know why you're at the edge. You're scaring me. Be careful. All right, we've got leash pulling, okay? Very reactive, huh? All right, gonna make a note of that. We're gonna work on that, okay? We're gonna work on everything. We're gonna get you real good. Come here. Say hello. We're gonna be best buds, you and I. All right? Need you to relax, okay? Everything's gonna be fine. I'm gonna get you back home to mommy and daddy soon, all right? Okay? <laughs> Definitely bark to anybody who comes in. Because, yeah, they just need to see that you're not a threat when you're walking in. And the problem a lot of people have is that people won't, people won't take the time. Obviously, when they're coming to visit you, they're like, they're right. gonna like allow you to use them as a, as a training uh, tool but that's what you would have to do is just every time someone comes in just have them like calm down for a second or come down to the dog's level and just let them get a sense for them and let them see let them see the person interacting with the family and stuff because once the dog understands that you're not a threat walking into his space then they start to calm down a little bit so trooper come Oh, he's like shaking. shaking. Wait, oh, I don't. He's scared. I think he's shaking because. Are you scared? It's okay, I'm gonna throw a treat. Let's see if he's too scared for it. He's too scared to eat. There you go. It's okay if I let go of his mom. I don't think he likes him. Right he brings him into his thing. He like hoards oh, he them. Them I him break them. Yeah, he I brings them under tables and stuff and like. I let go of this. Yeah, you can let go. <laughs> Troops. Well then, actually, let's not distract him too much, okay, babe? Let's just wait a few minutes. Start turning it into a little game. He came and sat next to you, too. Yeah. Turn it into a game. And then when I start asking him, for, I don't want to start asking him for something yet, but I'll start asking him for a sit soon and just you know, have him give me something in exchange. He knows how to sit, right? Mm hmm. Sit. Yes. Sit. Yes. He knows D O W N too. Okay. Sit. Down. Yes. Sit. Down. Down. I asked too much. <laughs> Sit. Down. Yes. And he said when we if we go to the door he you normally would bark? Um, if you come in, the door. All right, I want to go try that. Okay. Now that it, now that it's at least happy to come close enough to me. So I'll just do this a bunch, just so they start thinking that anytime I open the door, I might close it, 
uh, so they're not immediately trying to rush out. Also, you have to be, you don't want to be too predictable with the rewards. So sometimes you want to stagger them because you want to start bunching different um, uh, uh, behaviors to one reward. That way you're not rewarding for every single thing. So okay. I'm going I'm to step outside and come back in and see what happens. Yeah. Place. Good. Okay. Here. Okay. Sit. Place. Good. Was good, no barking that time. Down. Good. Okay. <laughs> so the bell just has to, the bell is the issue, it's not that anyone is outside. So it's like every time he hears the bell, automatically it just gets triggered. So we have to redirect the actual sound of the bell to this. So meaning every time he hears the bell, he automatically runs there, predicting that there's gonna be a reward. So, place. Good, down. Down. Okay. 
place. Good. Okay. Place. Down. Good. Okay. Place. Down. Good. Good. Place. Down. Good. Calm down. Good. Okay. Place. Down. Good. Down. Good. Not barking. So if you can manage it, it'll it'll be hard at first, but eventually it'll calm down. Just uh, I mean, again, obviously, if it's not something you can do easily, just let me know, and I'll. I'll come. And I think we might have to start closing this when you're doing the training because I feel like he just runs there by default. Yeah, I know. Or just put a barrier here when you're training so that the thing that he's used to doing, which is running over there. Just go see the right. Players. Yeah. So that'll be the. So you'll put a barrier here and you put a barrier there when you're training. Okay. So then it's going to be. He's going to try to run there and then he'll be confused like, oh, my. my <laughs> the thing that I like doing is, is, is changed. And so then it'll help to restructure his his new routine, which is literally just going to this area and waiting. So every time that bell rings, it'll, it'll start becoming automatic the more you do it. Eric, hmm? look at me. No, at you didn't me. want to play, so now I don't want to play. No, I'm not trying to play. Look at me. All right, good luck. Look at me. Maybe two minutes aren't so hard. Yeah, good luck with that. Look at me and talk. Look at me and talk. Alright, that's really Okay. Whoa, what's he doing? Just watching him. Hello, my name is Eric. What's your name? Rome. Hi, student. I love that you guys are doing. What's your name? <laughs> Hello, my name is Eric. What's your name? <laughs> look, look at your brothers. Look at them. Becca, do it again, do it again. Hi, sisters. Wait, wait. Have you been to all these places? <laughs> yeah. Tra they're like different travel bracelets from different places I've been. That's really cool. Is yeah. that all of It's the doorbell. Right. It's the same like movement. So you want it you want the automatic response every time there's a door opening to be running to there. So you just have to do that over and over again. I know they can learn because oh, yeah. just opening the treat jar in the bedroom. Right, automatically. He's in his cage, he's on his mat. Right. It, they know they're getting the yeah. treats, so it took, it took year or two. <laughs> right. But they know every night that's what happens. So. Right. Same thing. It's, it's just the repetition. When, and now if it's you, when we start to walk toward the bedroom and it's yeah. evening, they yeah, just know and they, they know. just go right in. We should give that a name. We call it Pavlov. Yeah, if only there was a name for that. <laughs> yeah, it's just you have to do something over and over. Like the reason this will work quicker, like quickly, is because we're going to do it over and over and over and over again until it just becomes second nature. Like he was, this wasn't as good last time. He got to a point where he wasn't barking at all and, well, and got, running. There's a lot more chaos right now. Rolling right. Around. And that's another thing. Yeah, there's, we have to start with little distractions and then kind of work our way up. But he's doing well. Dogs like to bark every time they hear a doorbell. 
because statistically, every time they've gone to the doorbell, there's been a reward. There's been someone walking in, petting them or something, whatever the case is. If they're not being defensive, if they're not protecting you, they're essentially just, you know, it's just a conditioning. They're basically conditioned to bark because the behavior has been reinforced and there's always been some version of a reward for them. And so this is a way to make it less likely that they're going to bark. And to be honest, you just, you're just gonna have to do it over and over and over again until they will literally give up. Some people don't have the patience for this, but I do. It's getting less and less because there's no reward. There's no reward. And so at this point, I'm going to come in with treats. If every time the dog, this thing, what is going on here? Production value is poop. It's poopy production value. All right, so if every time the doorbell rang, you send the dog to a place, a specific location, and then you fed them there, then they would start to associate the bell with that action. So immediately whenever they hear the doorbell, they will run to that place and they will wait. And that is a way to recondition their behavior. Instead of running to the door, instead of barking, you can start to curb that. And you can also, like I said, keep playing the doorbell sound until they get desensitized to it. And when they realize that there's no reward that comes from the door, then they start to lose interest in the door. And when they find value in going to the place instead, then they're more likely to run to that place. So that's sort of how you want to deal with that. The thing is sometimes I don't know that I want my dogs to stop barking all the way because that's in their nature. I just don't want them to bark excessively. So whenever they're barking, I try to just kind of observe it. If it's too much, then I'll go send them to place. When they go to place, then I'll feed them. But you have to decide because it's gonna be kind of confusing to the dog if you're saying sometimes it's okay to bark and sometimes it's not. So you have to be the one to say, you know what, I don't want barking. Not today, not never, not at all. And then you reward them for that. Uh, if you want them to bark, then you have to, you know, you just have to be direct with the dog. So you can't say it's okay to do it sometimes, it's not okay to do it other times. There are situations where that's okay. For example, I like to go skateboarding and I like for my dog to pull me on the skateboard. So I encourage her pulling behavior. But then when we're going for a walk, she tries to pull still. And then I'm like, no, I don't want you to pull. So I have to give her, uh, I have to do both things and I have to tell her when it's okay to pull and when it's not okay to pull. And I need her to understand that. And so that takes a bit more effort. It's not impossible, but initially it feels confusing to the dog because she's sometimes she's getting a reward for pulling because that's to, to her, that's the same behavior. And then other times there's no reward for pulling. Instead, you're getting reprimanded and you're saying, don't do it. And so, you know, your goal is not to confuse dogs. So if you're telling them to do some things sometimes, some things other times, it's going to get confusing. So try to decide what you want out of your dog before you begin training because you have to realize that once the dog learns it, it's going to be harder for them to unlearn it. Of course, you can teach them multiple versions of the same thing. Um, that takes more time. That takes more effort. So while she's barking right now, I'm going to go between her and the door and I'm just going to move them back. And then I'm going to move them to their place, which is over here. So while they're over here, over here. Okay, sit. I know you can't see it, but right here, I'm having her go to a sit and then down. Good. Juice box down. And then I offer a reward. And I say, that's the behavior that I want. And so I'm rewarding them for that behavior. But you have to be active about it. You have to have someone maybe on the other side of the door ringing that bell and automatically, you know, going to this location and feeding them then ringing the bell again and just doing that over and over and over again until the dog is desensitized. If you don't have a friend who can help you do that, then pull up a, a, a sound on your phone and then 
just play over and over again. The dog's not going to know the difference. The dog's not going to know what the sound's coming from. They're going to think it's a doorbell and they're going to treat it as such. So uh, these are methods you can try. If they work for you, feel free to come back to this video and tell me about it. If it doesn't work for you, hey, you know what? There are other methods out there. So my goal is just to give you some options and to teach you that there is more than one way to do something. And so if something doesn't work for one dog, it might work for the other dog and vice versa. There is no single way to do anything in dog training. I think that every dog is different, just like everyone's different. And so you have to be malleable with your training. You have to be adaptable and you have to adjust to the dog's needs. You have to be sensitive to the way the dog feels and the way the dog interacts with you and all of that stuff. And I think once you understand those things and once you've really, really understood your dog, then it's going to make training them fun. It's going to make it easier. It's going to make it such a wonderful experience. And that's what dog training really is all about. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you in the next video.